workshop yesterday. That was just over the top. It was wonderful deepening of consciousness of spirituality. Emma Curtis Hopkins is amazing. As those of you who were there know that each one of her words carries a vibration. So just hearing this incredible teacher, know that's what you are and who you are, and part of, you know, she's becoming so many other things in the, in the process, but we're all becoming. But she is an expert on Emma Curtis Hopkins, has written a book, which we have for sale in the back, on her, one of many that are to follow this. So uh, I'd like to, it's really my great pleasure and my great honor to introduce to you my friend and colleague, Uta Maria Sedilla. Thank you so much, Reverend Margaret and everybody for being here and for inviting me and for um, coming to hear um, me speak about my teacher who is in the other dimension. I'd like to, in, uh, to start my talks with reminding ourselves, you and myself, of who we are by reminding ourselves of the namaste and that reminding ourselves that we are all bright, beautiful, and beloved mm. beings of light. And so namaste, my friends. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Bright, beautiful, and beloved beings of light. Mm. I come to bring you Emma Curtis Hopkins, and I am a teacher who gives her a voice. I use her words to bring her teachings to people who are willing to work with her teachings. I have a great passion for, for her teachings, and you know how sometimes the spirit gives us a passion that we can't, dis we can't define it. We don't really know where it comes from, and it's kind of odd because the book falls into your lap from the shelf and goes, what is this? And it, it's an amazing, amazing change in life. It's beautiful. So for me, it was Emma Curtis Hopkins. And the research I, may, I did was amazing because she, um, she was so influential in the New Thought movement. First of all, she was a genius in bringing together and synthesizing the old, the ancient teachings. And then she brought this, these teachings to the New Thought movement and influenced the Unity movement, in some way the Divine Science movement, and the ho uh, uh, truth, Homes of Truth, and then of course Science of Mind. She's called the teacher of teachers and she was a mystic. She was studying with Mayor Baker Eddy, but only for one year. And see, uh, some of you might know this, but she was the editor of the Christian Science Magazine, and she then was writing articles that I was supposed to be Christian Science. Christian Science at the time was a word that was generic. So um, she used the we used the word Christian Science, but Mayor Baker Eddy thought that it belonged to her, which it had been um, started way way before Emma, uh, Mayor Baker Eddy. And Mary Baker Eddy was not happy if anybody would use anything other than her inspiration and her writings. And Emma Curtis Hopkins decided to write an article on the oneness of spirit in all religions and she brought together all the different teachings and, and put it in this magazine and he, she got herself booted out because it wasn't the right, she, she, you, she said, you didn't use Mary Baker Eddy's writings, even, although those are good writings, but she, amplified it and brought it out better. And it, Emma, Emma Curtis Hopkins was a teacher who lived from 1849 to 1925. Mm. So just imagine going back into time in the late 1800s, you see, where sometimes there was no running water and things like, I mean, it, like everything was pretty primitive still, you know, and um, there was no internet and, and maybe it was hard to get books, right? Mm -hmm. Emma Chris Hopkins was able to, uh, to read so many books. She was a voracious reader and she was able to integrate what she was reading. Now, a lot of times when we read things, I read things um, in, out and it's mm -hmm. gone, 
But with her, she was able to remember all of this and to bring it together. And I think in her writings, she strings sacred truths together from one, from one teaching, uh, from, the, from the Upanishad, from the Christian scripture, from the Bhagavad Gita, from everywhere. It's just an amazing thing. And she actually influenced, around that time, 50,000 students and uh, started um, ordaining women, which is, thank you. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, read in, uh, in uh, the, the description of her life, uh, uh, Reverend Joanna Rogers from Ohio wrote a biography and of Emma. We did not know much, we don't know much about Emma, but uh, she wrote that she brought thousand people into one room and charged them $50 for the classes, for like an eight-week class. A thousand people in one room. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's like amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah. like wow, you know, like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, see, she wanted to use, she wanted to teach people how to use the principles of truth, mm -hmm. or the principles of of the Christian teachings, the, 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 the primitive teachings of Jesus Christ. She wanted to bring that to people and say, use them and your life will change. What we say in Science of Mind, change your thinking, change your life, right? Mm -hmm. So her purpose was to open the soul to the Christ of God within. And she said, let souls speak through the intellect and lift up the consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I noticed by, write, by reading and writing and copying her work that I would go into these transy kind of places, which I, it's not me, okay, that's not me, so it's weird. So going to these transy places and it, everything is totally crystal clear and, and it, it's just amazing, you know, wow, this is these insights, these awesome things, right? And then I would say, oh, guess what? I have this insight and it's fantastic and you see, it doesn't come out in, through the conscious mind. It comes, it, it sinks into the soul. Mm -hmm. It sinks into the subconscious mind. And it teaches, that inner Christ teach, teaches us how to use these two truths, these mystical truths that Emma was teaching. Emma taught the totality of truth. It's, the, it's an evolution of the, the spiritual um, thought. And she was uh, teaching um, a progression from the mental science to the mystical science to the absolute science. And she, she was teaching that we are to work with the truth, to use science of mind, use it, right? Mm -hmm. We use it and to, to then evolve through these stages of spiritual evolution from the mental through myth, uh, mystical to the absolute. So what, what, it, what it, she was doing is, she wasn't actually saying you go from the mental to the mystical to the absolute and stay there. And these are not stages in that sense. But you know, we kind of go in and out of each stage. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden we become aware of how we are in a mystical place. Like when, we, when I was transing in this, it was like, it was like a trance. It, it, it was like this clarity, wow. This, this absolute clarity, and then trying to express it, it wouldn't come out, and the, the, because we don't have the language. Emma taught through the 12 gates. She said there were 12 gates of evolution, and she used the steps that, uh, that we can read in Genesis of the, uh, of the creation of, the, of the, uh, the world, when God created, let there be light, there are steps in that part of Genesis. And so these steps are reflecting, these 12 steps that she talks about, are reflecting these, these Genesis steps of creation. And they spiral up through the mental, mystical, and absolute teachings into, into uh, the Christ consciousness. So her first gate is always the word of God. The second is always denials. Everything is God, there's nothing but God. Then affirmation of everything as God, and then faith um, that God is all there is, and that is a faith in us that, that that knowing, that deep deep knowing that there is only God. 
And so uh, each one of her, of her writings, each one of her books and each one of her texts even, is including these 12 steps, right? And when we read, like it's, let's say for example, I would, we would find a text that she wrote, like an article in the Inter-Ocean newspaper or something, and you would take that text and you would read it and you know about the gates, you will know this is a chapter five or this is a chapter nine. You will recognize by the, the theme of the chapter that it was that particular gate. And uh, Isaiah, we read that, open the gates. See, she, her, her work is a lot based on Christian scriptures, but if you know the Hindu scriptures, the Bhagavad Gita, and then you find all these different kinds of um, 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 quotations in there. And she's t saying that if we open these gates, we experience an evolution of consciousness where the divine enters the human, which is what we have in our, in our logo, in our science of mind logo is that V coming down into in manifestation. That is this um, evolution of consciousness into our uh, being, into our world, into the body of God. So this is how we can experience a new life, but it's not something that's just given to us. We must train and learn and study and speak the word to bring that evolution into our experience. Emma Curtis Hopkins gave us the best teachings of the great religions of the world and created a universal spirituality, which was taken up by the Fillmore's and by, uh, by the Rick six, uh, sisters and by Nona Brooks and Emily Cady, if anybody of you knows uh, Lessons in Truth, by, uh, that is the textbook for unity, that is pure Emma, pure Emma, because Emily Cady was one of her students. <coughs> She, uh, so her teachings are universal and interfaith, which is something that we need today. We need it so much to bring together that golden thread of truth that runs through all spirituality and spiritual teaching. She actually shared her soul evolution through her writings. And so as she goes through these evolution in her own being, she wrote all that out. And so we can follow her soul evolution in, in her writings. A lot of times uh, her writings are difficult to read. At first, when I tried to read, read uh, high mysticism, it's just almost like, you know, you just like read it and go like, I don't know. And it is, and, and I know many people who said that, and so um, I decided that I was going to read and study high mysticism no matter what. That was what I was gonna do. And so I proceeded to, to work with high mysticism and I created a compilation of, of the main ideas. Because what she did in high mysticism, first of all, she always has each, each chapter is a gate. The first six, six gates are always about the realization of the Christ within. And the next six gates are about ministry and realizing the Christ one in all. So what I did is I created like a Reader's Digest version of high mysticism <laughs> and put the gates in there and then her, te her little uh, book there, the resume, which is the, which is the application, and put it together into a spiritual practice. And I, I, I was able to, to, to work with this over the years. I mean, I've been working on this for 15 years at least, and finally it's in the book that is available now. What's important about this, it's, it's that it's creating a bridge for people to, to really go into high mysticism and to really live, live high, uh, this high watch and high mysticism. Uh, so Emma Curtis Hopkins was a, a teacher for Ernest Holmes. Ernest Holmes uh, had written Signs of Mind previously, might, well, might not have been published because uh, the publication was in 1926, the first publication, and Emma uh, went into the other dimension in 1925. But we know that he studied with her one-on-one -on -one in uh, 1924, so it was only just like two a year where he went to her privately 
and he would say that she just showed up in the room with her hat and her gloves on and her long dress and all that, and she would sit down and then she would just speak for an hour and then leave. <laughs> she in her clo in her coat and hat and if <coughs> in the house, right? I mean, it's like, so he was just fascinated by her, and he said that a little bit after when he realized that this was the way she was teaching, he just kind of relaxed into it, and then she actually opened up to him, and she uh, he said she was quite funny and had uh, had good ideas, and she loved flowers, and she that she we don't know much about her, but he was able to tell us. And he said that she was like, she was emanating this energy, this psychic breeze, like this mystical energy that was creating this conviction of, of her, the truth, okay? That he was feeling this and then he infused it into Science of Mind mm -hmm. after he had already written it. So just I want to share uh, the core beliefs of Emma Curtis Hopkins with you. And um, I'm going to use her words as if she was speaking to you, yes? Mm -hmm. Remember that I do not believe in the reality of matter or evil. I do not believe that if God is omnipresent, there is any other presence at all but God. Mm -hmm. Remember that I hold that if God is good, then only the good is real. If God is spirit, then all is spirit. I reject anybody's verdict who believes in the power of evil in any way, shape, or form. I do not believe in poverty, sorrow, or sickness. If we were all of one mind on this theme, I am sure we would rise as on eagles' pinions into the sight of those riches of love and goodness that lie here in this atmosphere around us this instant. I speak boldly of these things and urge you to agree. Let go of your prejudice for a moment. Let go everything and sing with me of this wonderful spirit here present. This one spirit, one only, whom I adore and breathe my daily strength from. Rise from the memory of your other thoughts and breathe ye all of it for a single moment. Forget everything else. Breathe deep. These words will fall down into your deep most being. One spirit, one spirit, one spirit. Among Emma Curtis Hopkins' private possessions, we found two treatments. One was called the Radiant I Am, and the other one is called Self-Treatment. Each one of these fantastic treatments is composed of 12 sections, hmm. just like all her work. Hmm. But this was her own private work for herself. So she used this Radiant I Am treatment to, to evolve her consciousness, to speak new words about herself, to come out of that I am a worm of the dusk into I am made in the image and likeness of God. This is what she was teaching us. And so I encourage you to, to take a look at this radiant I am, where she says that we are the power of life to the universe. I am the power of life to the universe. I am the power of health to the universe. I am the power of strength to the universe. And the power of support to the universe. I am the sufficiency of my universe. And the security of the infinite stretches. Peace, peace to them that are far off and to them that are near. And she goes on. And what I want to share with you is that that treatment was not available when I started learning about Emma. Somebody came and gave a talk and started giving us a little bit of the radiant I am, that little bitsy thing. And I thought, I want this. Oh, give it to me, give it to me. And I was desperate to have all those words. I wanted the whole thing, right? And it was not in print. Well. Guess what? 
it's all in print now. It's all given freely. And so if you come this afternoon, I will give you, first of all, the whole text and the CD where it's spoken that you can listen to. And just to give you just one more little tidbit of, of like, to get you interested in the radiant I am, I'm going to share that one bitsy tiny piece. But you have a chance to hear the whole thing and to receive the whole information. And just remember, when I, when years ago, like 10, 15 years ago, Emma had just two books uh, out in the, there were two books published, right? Scientific Mental Christian, pra Christian Mental Practice and the High Mysticism. And now we have dozens of her works published. And we need to look at it because it is, it is going to help us to bring peace and harmony and healing to this world, to ourselves and to the world. And so here is that tiny little bitsy piece. I am the power of song. Joyous song that steals in unquenchable smiling through the universe. I am the eternal smile. As I shed myself through the atoms and through the globes, they sing. I am the joyous song, unquenchable, unhinderable, forever. No other sound but singing. No other voice but joy is heard from this day forth. I am the inspiring joy of my world forever. This is my ministry. I think this. I speak this. I write this. I live this. There is joy beyond ecstasy. I am that joy. And so it is. Mm. So, okay. <laughs>